Hello everyone, welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. Today we're going to be going over a topic that we find in our urban geography unit called the bid rent curve. Now the bid rent curve is important to us because what it talks to us about is uh, the distribution of different types of activities near the urban center. So what you'll notice here is I have you know, just like a normal graph that you might find in your math class uh, with our horizontal and our vertical axis. On this particular graph, we're going to label it in a couple of different parts. So, again, we're talking about activities that are taking place near the urban center. So in urban geography, we talk about what's called the central business district. So hopefully that's a term uh, that you've been talking about in your class. We're going to abbreviate it by calling it the CBD, again, central business district. Okay. Our horizontal axis, we are going to talk about this as uh, the distance from the urban center. So the further I get away, uh, the further I go this way, the further we, well, further away we are from the urban center, the central business district. And on our vertical axis, we're going to talk about this as cost. It's going to be the cost of the land as it relates to the distance uh, from the central business district. When we're looking at the bid rent curve, we're assuming that there are three different types of activities that are going to be taking place in the space as it relates to uh, the distance from the central business district. Now we know there are other types of things that are going to be going on and of course you're going to have varying degrees of the different types of activities uh, but just for simplicity's sake and for our curve uh, we're only going to be looking at three different types of activities and you can see those over here we have commercial activities, industrial activities and then also residential activities. So what the bid rent curve is going to talk to us about is uh, how much are each of these activities willing to pay for land as it relates to distance uh, from the central business district. Hopefully, uh, when we talk about the bid rent curve, hopefully this idea of, of rent is something that you've discussed in your class before, this idea of, of land costs. Hopefully that's something that you've uh, discussed, especially as it relates to Von Thun's model in the agricultural unit. So this idea of, of rent is going to be important to us. Now the idea of bid is also going to be important to us because what we're talking about is how much are each of the activities willing to bid for land as it relates to the distance or the proximity to the central business district. Okay? And so the way that we construct our graph, again we have our vertical axis with the distance, our sorry, our horizontal axis with the distance, our vertical axis with the cost as it relates to distance from the central business district. And what we assume is that the activity that is willing to pay the most for land closest to the central business district is going to be commercial activities. And as you studied in your uh, urban unit as you're looking at services, uh, what we know is that commercial activities uh, want to be closer to the central business district because that is where the consumers are, that's the place that has the greatest access in, in terms of different types of transportation methods, and so that's going to be the place where they want to be to, in order to sell their goods. And what we're going to find is that as you move away from the central business district, the commercial activities are willing to pay less and less for land because it becomes less and less advantageous for them to be in that spot. So what we find is that you have this nice, you have this nice negative correlation that exists. And this line ain't going to be perfect. You have this nice negative correlation that exists. As I move away from the central business district, we're going to find that the commercial activities are willing to pay less and less for land until we get down to absolute zero. And this is the this is the amount of money that they're willing to bid for the land as it relates to proximity to central business district. So when we look at our activities, and we have commercial activities, industrial, and residential activities. Uh, we talked about how the commercial activities typically are willing to pay most uh, for the amount of land closer to the uh, central business district. Between industrial and residential activities, the industrial activities are willing to pay more than residential activities for land close to the urban center, but they're not willing to pay as much as commercial activities. Now the reason for that, the reason for that uh, is because Commercial activities don't need as much space as industrial activities. Industrial activities typically take up a lot more space. Uh, they don't necessarily need to be near the urban center because they are distributing their products not only to this maybe urban center, but also to areas outside of that particular urban center. So they don't necessarily need to be very close to the urban center. So let's just give them a point here, and I'm using green for industrial activities just to be ironic. Anyway, uh, so we find that they're willing to pay not as much as commercial activities, and the same thing is going to happen. As we get away from the urban centers, there's going to be this negative correlation that's going to exist until industrial activities are willing to pay zero for the land as it relates to proximity from the central business district. Okay, So we find, starting at this point, commercial activities are willing to pay more. Now this doesn't mean you won't find industrial activities, it just means that commercial activities are willing to bid more 
for the land. And as we go down our graph, what we find is that up until a certain point, which is where these two lines cross, uh, this is where these two lines cross, that the commercial activities are willing to pay more. Once we cross this point, we see that industrial activities are actually willing to pay more for land than commercial activities. So at this point, what we can do, begin reading our graph and understanding the land use patterns, is we can draw a line straight down. And what that means for us is from this point to this point, I'm most likely to find commercial activities. And then from this point on, I'm more willing to find industrial activities. But again, I haven't added my third activity, which is the residential activity. And I'll use red for R for red for residential. Again, residential activities typically are not willing to pay as much because these are singular individuals who typically can't afford as much for land rent or to, uh, to bid for the property as the industrial or commercial activity. It doesn't mean you won't find any uh, residential activities. It just means that you typically are going to find less than commercial or industrial activities in the urban center. So this is the maximum amount that residential activities are willing to pay uh, for land in the middle of the central business district. Same thing, we have a negative correlation. The further I get away from the urban center, the less and less they're willing to pay. And again, these are not exact straight lines because I'm because I'm freehanding it, and so you know it's an approximation. So the same thing happens from this point onward. Both commercial and industrial activities are willing to pay more until I cross a certain line. When I once I cross this line, now residential activities are willing to pay more than the commercial activities. And then once I cross once I cross this line the residential activities are willing to pay more than the industrial activities. So we'll do the same thing that we did in the previous situation. We'll take this and we'll draw a line straight down. Now what this means for us, again, from this point, center of the central business district, to this point, we're most likely to find commercial activities. Now from this point to this point, we're most likely to find industrial activities. And then beyond that point, from this point to this point, we're, we're most likely to find different types of residential activities. Again, the people living in residential, the people living in these residential spaces don't necessarily need to be as close to the central business district. They want land that's more affordable. They then can travel into the central business district as they need to in order to obtain the goods and services that are available for them. Okay? So what we find here through the bid rent curve is based upon the cost of land, we're most likely to find different types of activities, whether they be commercial, industrial residential. Now you might be looking at this and saying, well Coach Elrod, that's fine. You know, I kind of understand what you're, what you're saying there, but you know, I, I don't quite understand all of the application. Well, one of the things that we'll, we'll find is that this is, relates directly back to one of the urban land use models that we've looked at. So if, we, if I take this and just erase this down here at the bottom to give us a little bit more, a little bit more room, and of course this is just one plane. If we extend this out, and I'm probably going to go off my screen here, if we extend this out, into multiple planes, and we begin to make the exact same types of connections across the various planes, hopefully what you begin to see emerge is something that looks relatively similar to you. And I just used the wrong color, didn't I? Got to be consistent. So what you should begin to see emerge is something that looks similar to the concentric zone model. And again, the concentric zone model talks to us about talks to us in almost the exact same terms. The different types of activities as it relates to the central business district are primarily going to be based upon the cost of the land, and so that's going to help us to see uh, the distribution of those activities. It looks almost exactly the same as the von Thunen's model because we're talking about activities based upon cost of land. So. Here we have something that looks very similar to the concentric zone model. And remember, that's a little bit different from the sector model. Remember, both sector model and concentric zone model are based upon the city of Chicago when we're trying to understand urban land use. Remember, the sector model, what we have is this idea that the different types of activities are based upon different types of transportation networks. So instead of talking about just cost of land, what we're looking at is where are the different transportation nodes and then what types of activities are taking place around that different, that different, uh, those different types of transportation networks. So there you have it. That is the bid rent curve, the basic concepts, this idea of 
the, di the spatial distribution of different types of activities as it relates to land costs and proximity to the central business district. So I hope you found that to be helpful, and as always, I hope to see you next time.